Ah, hello, everybody. We're now being recorded. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, and by the way, um, just so you know, the chat window can be saved uh, by clicking on the little three dots. Uh, so you can save the chat. Um, I may post a few things in the chat window. Um, you can post documents in the chat window. You can post images. Uh, you can post links. Uh, and so that's a nice way to share something with other people. Uh, just so you should be aware of that. So I am going to now share my screen. Let's see how this works. All right. I'm desktop one. I have two large monitors. I'm going to share one of them. <coughs> and this should work. I think there's a bit of a delay. And I'm, you, can, you should now be able to see my screen, which is mostly blue, correct? Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. So um, I'm going to um, open a uh, Safari window. Oh, it opened over there. I'll put it here. Can you see that Safari window? All right. Okay, so um, I'm going to start by talking about images in general. <clears throat> And in my tutorial section of teacherjohn.com, oh, great. I don't know if you saw that. Did you see that? The message that your internet connection is unstable. Did you see that on my screen? Okay, I've seen this before for Zoom. Okay, let me, let me give you a warning right now because this is, I've been having a lot of trouble with my connectivity. Um, it's entirely possible that this will just drop. I'll just drop off. Um, and then I will have to reboot my modem and that takes a few minutes and then I will restart the meeting. If for some reason this meeting just goes away, it's because my connection dropped again. And hopefully I'll be able to restart it within a few minutes. Um, I've been having <laughs> this problem all week um, and it must be because of everybody's on the internet. I really don't know. I've never had it before this week. So I apologize for that, but I just got the message from Zoom that says your connection appears to be unstable. So um, that's a kind of a warning. So bear with me. If, if we drop, um, just hang on and within a few minutes, try to, try to just join again and, um, and we'll, we'll resume. Okay? So I apologize if that happens. So you can see the web page, right? I'm going to go to tutorials. And um, under images, we're going to start with image file formats for the web. So this is a chart. Um, now it's interesting because um, normally I would make this bigger so people in the back of the room could see it. Um, when you are seeing my screen, is that type legible to you or should I make it bigger? How's that? It's good. Is that better or not? Can you make it bigger? You want it bigger, bigger? Bigger, bigger. Let's try that. Uh, it's nice. It's great. That good? Yeah. All right. And again, this is online, so you can, you can look at this on your own computer with your own viewing settings later. But um, when we talk about images for the web, there are certain kind of images that are appropriate for the web, um, and these are those images. Um, the, the, the images for the web are generally going to be either GIF, JPEG, or PNG. Those are what we call the three native file formats for the web. Um, you know that there are many digital image file formats, um, and we're talking about two-dimensional images here. Um, and um, for example, um, there are many other uh, file uh, formats, such as PSD, Photoshop documents, um, InDesign files, Illustrator files, and so forth. Those are not appropriate for the web. Um, if you want to put an image online, you really want to make it either a GIF, a JPEG, or a PNG. Um, SVG is a little special. We'll talk about that um, after we talk about the other three. GIF, JPEG, and PNG are old standard formats. Now, um, the, uh, the GIF stands for Graphics Interchange Format. Sometimes it's pronounced GIF. Um, I usually say GIF, but some people say GIF. It doesn't really matter. JPEG, um, Joint Photographic Experts Group, um, is sometimes abbreviated JPG or JPEG. Uh, PNG, Portable Network Graphics, PNGs. Now, um, of these formats, um, we have um, 
if you see down here where it says established, <clears throat> the GIF format dates back to 1987. The JPEG format was started in 1992. The ping format comes from 1995 and SVG or scalable vector graphics goes back to 2001. So you can see the history here. These are relatively recent things for the computer industry, but for the web, they're, they're old. Now, um, the GIF format was the first one to be used um, uh, online on the, on the web, uh, and it has an interesting history. Uh, it was created by CompuServe. And for those of you who are old enough to remember, CompuServe was one of the early online services which predates the World Wide Web. And CompuServe um, was not easy to use. It was very clunky. Uh, and they had email addresses that were full of a bunch of numbers and things. And America Online, this young upstart, came along uh, with some funding and expertise from groups like Apple, which knew a little more about user interface design than the CompuServe folks. And, and America Online quickly blew CompuServe out of the water and became the dominant online service before the web blew everything out of the water. So the GIF format was created by CompuServe to be an efficient online format when modems were really slow. Um, the JPEG format was created because the GIF format was not good for photographs. So the GIF format can be used for photographs, <coughs> but the JPEG format is really the appropriate format for a photograph online. So if you have a photograph, you really want to save it as a JPEG. Okay, photographs should be JPEG. Any image that has uh, photographic-like qualities, such as continuous tone, uh, gradients, lots of different colors, that kind of uh, file format is best as a JPEG. The ping format was um, created, it was invented as an alternative to the GIF format because the GIF format, um, while it was thought originally that the GIF format was an open source format, it was discovered that a corporation owned the patent to um, one of the algorithms used by the GIF format. So at one point, Unisys Corporation um, owned the algorithm that was used in the GIF compression format and Unisys threatened to start charging licensing fees on every GIF image online, which freaked everybody out. Um, then they backtracked and said, well, only software that creates GIF images will start to charge licensing fees, which still freaks people out. So the ping standard was created as an alternative to GIF. Since that time, um, the patent has expired. So GIF is again open source. So we have GIF, JPEG, and ping, and they're all open source formats. In fact, so is SVG. It's an open source format. No one company owns any of these formats. And that's one of the reasons that we, we standardized on them for the web. SVG is a different format. It's a vector format. And GIF, JPEG, and PING are bitmaps. Um, so they're just dots, pixels. Now, for vectors, what really happened on the, uh, on the web was that Flash um, became the de facto vector standard format for the web because SVG has existed for a, a quite a bit of time, but it never really got traction the way Flash did because Flash was very well developed compared to SVG, and you could do all kinds of things with Flash, you create animations, and Flash was an amazing program for its time. And so for a while, Flash was very popular online. Um, it is not so popular anymore for a variety of reasons. Um, so um, really, Flash, most people avoid Flash for the online uh, imagery at this point in time. And if you want to use a vector, use SVG. But quite frankly, SVG use is quite limited uh, online. Um, I think it's mostly used for like Google Maps and that kind of stuff. When you have a scalable image that you want to be able to scale very easily online, that's the be beauty of the SVG or scalable, in the name, scalable vector format. Um, but um, aside from things like Google Maps and, and, and the, the scalable mapping online, SVGs are not really that well used online. So I would say, um, and, unless you're really getting into scalable graphics, at this point we focus on GIF, JPEG, and PING. Um, and they are well supported and um, are the standards. Now there are some differences between the, st the standards. Um, the GIF format, uh, it's basic limitation. Uh-oh. You're still seeing me, right? I got the internet 
unstable thing again. Okay, the GIF format has a limitation that can only handle up to 256 distinct colors. So um, the GIF format um, is used for <laughs> things like um, line art, logos, um, things that are not photographs, things that don't have a lot of colors. Um, if you start with an image that has more than 256 colors and you save it as a GIF, you will only have 256 colors after you save it as a GIF. So even though it's considered a lossless format, if you start with more than 256 colors, it will lose quality when you save it as a GIF. Um, the ping has two different subformats, 256, the ping 8, and the ping 24, which is millions of colors. So ping is kind of like GIF on steroids. Um, but GIF can do something that the ping can't, it, it can do animations. You can do cute little animated GIF. <laughs> um, the JPEG, of course, um, is the photographic standard and anything with a photograph is going to be saved as a JPEG. Um, any uh, questions so far? I see a new person, Tony. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, good. Can you see me? Yes. Welcome. Do you have any problems um, accessing <laughs> this right now? First of all, this is so cool because I just got a new computer. <laughs> all, right. all right. Well, I'm going to assume you're okay unless you let me know otherwise. I'm, I'm going to keep going. But I just saw that you had joined, so I want to say. <sighs> and it looks like we lost Leslie. Uh -oh. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so that's an overview of uh, the image file formats that we use on web pages. Now, um, one thing uh, that is a little tricky is the issue of transparency. If you want to have a transparent background on an image um, for the web, you, you are either going to use um, a GIF or a ping. Um, the ping gives you more transparency options because with a GIF format, a pixel is either completely transparent or it's completely opaque. There is no middle ground. There is no translucency in a GIF pixel. A ping pixel can uh, has the ability to have partial transparency, so that um, it's what we call the alpha channel. And with a, um, a ping graphic, you can more gracefully blend the foreground and the transparent background together. Um, so I just wanted to mention that difference. OK. Um, also, with the JPEG, um, every time you save a JPEG, uh, you lose quality. So when you have a JPEG and you're editing it and then you save it and then you make a change and you save it and you make a change and you save it, you're going to keep losing quality every time you resave it. So um, you want to be aware of that and um, generally go back and start with your original if you're going to make a lot of changes to, to a JPEG. Um, any questions so far? Okay. Um, so I am going to go off of that tutorial and I am going to, is it seven? Exercise seven. All right. Now, um, the, um, the exercise that I want to kind of walk through um, again uh, does uh, require a graphics program and I'm going to use Photoshop from most of this. If you don't have access to Photoshop, see normally you would be able to go to the lab and use Photoshop, and then, but we, can't, we don't have that, so um, bear with us for now. Uh, but the techniques and the principles are all the same regardless of what software you use to, to manage your images. Um, now, remember we talked about HTML tags. Um, how do you put an image on a page, you may ask. I'm glad you asked that question. I'm going to pretend somebody asked. Did you ask? Okay. I am going to open up a new text document. And let's make the text on this a good size so you can see it. Where's my window? There it is. Takes a while. Where's my fonts window? Everything is running a little slower for some reason. I guess maybe when I share my screen. Um, where'd that window go? 
Oh. Oh, I see. Sorry. Uh, I have two monitors, so things get a little wonky. And for some reason, Text Wrangler crashed. So uh, a little instability here. Let me open up uh, my text editor again. Um, OK, so while that's happening, I'm going to go back to uh, exercise two and grab that template uh, as an HTML starting point. Just because it's easy, I'm going to copy that. And um, as soon as my text wrangler is done jumping around, uh, I will paste that in. And we'll talk about how to put an image on a page. So uh, an image tag is um, an HTML tag that's kind of special. It's fairly unique. It's a very old tag. Um, and um, when HTML was first written, uh, it didn't exist, but was added shortly afterwards because one of the things people wanted to do was put images on web pages. And I think I've got my text wrangler up here. Is it bigger? Not really. No, it, it's small. Where is my text display? <clears throat> oh, it crashed again. Okay. That's interesting because that doesn't usually happen with my uh, text editor. It seems like it doesn't like to change the font size when I'm sharing my screen. Well, that could be a bit of a problem. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to, to raise that type size, am I? I think if I do it again, it'll just crash again. So um, I don't know. I've never, never had to try to change text size in Text Wrangler while Zoom was sharing my screen, but apparently Text Wrangler doesn't like it. That's not good. Huh? Is just doing the zoom in command, would that change it? Uh, there's not a zoom in command. It's, um, it's in, it's, if, if I go to show fonts again, it'll no, no, probably do, do that. crash. While that window is active, you know, can you just type command plus? That should get better. I don't think, no, that doesn't work in. Um, Really? Yeah, let's see. I'm doing it. Yeah. It doesn't work in Text Wrangler. That's what the other window is for. Yeah. But um, can you actually see the type here? We can see it just fine. Just move your head okay. closer. Yeah, I'm really sorry. I couldn't make it bigger. It's going to crash again if I do. Um, so what I'm going to do here is talk about putting an image on a page first. Now, um, the image tag is IMG. So um, let me try a new document. Do not crash. Actually, you know what? I might want to violate my uh, anti-Microsoft Word for, let me see here. Um, Word may allow me to make the text bigger for you. Let's just, uh, let's try something here. Yeah, I know, I know Text Wrangler quit. Yeah, okay. Um, just for the purpose of visuals. Um, <coughs> Okay, you can see that, right? Let's, um, let's zoom in on this. Is that better? Uh, yes. Okay, so um, in fact, I wanna make it even bigger. Let's... Uh, yeah, it looks good now. I think if I do a... Uh, <coughs> Um, okay. Um, again, you wouldn't normally want to work in Word. I'm actually going to keep my text wrangler open here, but I'm going to do this in Word so you can see it easier. Now, um, remember that there are different kinds of HTML tags. There's what we call block level and inline level, correct? And an inline level does not start on a new line and a block level element always starts on a new line, correct? Mm -hmm. You're supposed to say yes, yes, okay, yeah. I see you all nodding, kind of. Okay, good. So um, the IMG tag, uh, looks like that, okay? That means image. Now, an image tag is different than the other tags because it's a representation of an image. So um, it doesn't contain, um, mm -hmm. It doesn't contain textual, it doesn't contain text. 
it, it is essentially going to be a link to an image. So in the same way that your file paths link to a, a hyperlink, another web page, um, an image tag has a path in it and it tells the browser where to find the image and the browser just grabs that image file and inserts it wherever you put this tag, which means again, file paths need to be understood. Now, um, image is the element, right? And what's your basic HTML syntax? Element space attribute equals value. You all remember that, right? So if I type that up here, element attribute equals value. You remember that? Oops. I put that on the board every class so far. And that's your basic HTML syntax. Then you have some, um, some text usually, and then you have a slash element. That's your basic uh, HTML uh, syntax. Uh, Question? <clears throat> Sorry, my microphone kind of died. Let's fix oh, it. Okay. So um, now, most of the time, this is where the stuff between the, uh, the beginning and the ending tag, the stuff that appears on the page. But the image tag is different. It doesn't follow that. The image tag does not have an ending. It's one of those few tags that doesn't have an ending. There's no slash image. So if you remember, you've learned a few tags that don't have endings. Break, horizontal rule, remember those? BR, HR, there is no ending. There's no slash BR, there's no slash HR. They don't have endings because breaks don't enclose anything and, and horizontal rules are just lines. Um, there are other elements that don't have endings in the meta section of your document in the head section, uh, that, such as the meta tag, uh, which doesn't have a slash meta. There's no slash ending for meta. So image is one of those weird tags that doesn't have an ending, um, but it does require more than just IMG because you have to tell the browser um, how to find the image. So there are a couple of what we call required attributes for the image tag. Um, SRC equals, um, and then you have a path to the image. So um, I'm going to put a path in here that looks like this, um, dog.gif for now. Uh, I'll pretend we have a picture of a dog. Now, um, let me pull this out. I just want to push all this down out of the way so we can look at this together. So you can see here the pattern. Um, image is the element, source is the attribute, and <coughs> this is a path to the image. And that should look familiar <coughs> to you, like a hyperlink, A space href mm -hmm. equals, and then a path to the web page you're linking to, right? So it's that same kind of syntax. Now, um, so the source attribute is required for the image element, okay? Um, Likewise, there's another attribute required called alt. And alt stands for alternative text description. And uh, to, an alternative text description, oops, sorry, equals, um, is just you describing what the image is. So I'm gonna assume this is a picture of a dog. So alt equals dog would be a very simple example of what's called an alt element, an alt attribute. <coughs> People speak of alt tags. You'll, you'll hear the phrase all the time, alt tags. That's a, sloppy, uh, that's a sloppy way of speaking about alt. Technically, alt is an attribute of the image tag. So um, alt is not an element, it's not a tag. But a lot of people just refer to alt tags, and it's a bit incorrect, but that's what everybody says. So. I may fall into that myself, but technically they're alt attributes of the image element. Now, um, the reason we have an alt attribute uh, is different than the reason we have a source attribute. We need the source attribute because you have to tell the browser where to find the image file. I mean, that's pretty straightforward. Otherwise the browser has no idea what to put there. Well, alt is not necessary for the image to show up on the page the way source is. Alt is necessary for um, accessibility reasons. Uh, and so um, there are uh, section 508 uh, is a legal requirement of many websites, um, any website published by 
uh, a government website, uh, a school website, a nonprofit agency that gets any kind of government funding and so forth. There are many uh, reasons that you need to follow Section 508 accessibility guidelines, which we will get into towards the end of the semester. Um, but for now, I'll just realize that there are, all these, there are these requirements, and ALT is one of the basic requirements of making your page accessible, uh, especially to those who cannot see, because the software will understand the text dog, and it will read that aloud to somebody who's blind, for example, who may be surfing your page, and they could see uh, they, they can see that they're not seeing the dog, but they know that they're not seeing a dog picture. So the text that you put in the alt value here is descriptive. And so you don't have to say something like, I see this a lot, picture of dog. That, that's something people do a lot. Um, it's, that's the Department of Redundancy Department. Um, it's redundant to say that because we know it's a picture. So you don't have to do that. You just basically describe what the picture is, okay? And so um, if the picture's a dog, you have a dog. If it's a more complex picture, you can put more words uh, to describe it. If you um, find yourself writing more than a short sentence, then you wanna really cut that down. It should be no longer than a short sentence. Um, there are other ways to describe an image with longer text. There's a long description. Uh, well, you know, we're not gonna get into that right now. So, so just know that there are other ways to describe images, but the basic way is the alt attribute of the image element. So you need image as the element and then source attribute and alt attribute. Those are your two required attributes for the image tag. So anytime you use an image tag, you always have to have source and alt. And again, it doesn't matter uh, with the order because um, in HTML, the um, attributes are interchangeable. I could start with alt and then go to source or vice versa. Uh, the order of the attributes is generally not significant within an HTML tag. But the source is the key because if you don't have the correct path, your image will not show up. And so the most common mistakes and errors in learning images on the web is that your path is simply incorrect. And so you're familiar with paths from linking. Um, and one of the reasons paths are so important, again, because images uh, need to be uh, linked to in the same way. You need a path to the image and you need a path to a style sheet. So paths are really important. And this, this assumes that there's, an, there's a, a folder called images and that a file called dog.gif is in that images folder, which brings me to my next point. And that is online in your public HTML folder. If you don't already have an images folder, you need to create a folder called images, all lowercase. That is the convention. It's the widely used convention. You can do other things, but um, the bottom line is that the way you should do it and the way I will require you to do it is to have an images folder in your public HTML, directly in your public HTML. So it's basically going to be sitting there just like your um, CSS folder is sitting there. Um, you're gonna have an images folder. And that is going to contain all your images. That is the industry standard. There are many reasons we do that. Um, sure, you could have an image anywhere on the, in your <coughs> public HTML and you could link to it with a path and it will work. But the standard is to always put all your images in an images folder. Now, um, that means that images folder will grow quite large. You'll have lots of images over time on any website. Um, can you subdivide it? Sure can. So you could have sections of your images folder. You can make subfolders inside your images folder if you have different kinds of images. You may have background images. You may have images for your menu. You may have all kinds of different ways you want to subdivide your images folder up. And that's all well and good. You can create subfolders within your images folder for different kinds of images. As long as your path is correct, all that will work. But for now, we're just going to assume all your images are directly in your images folder. And that path is a fairly standard <coughs> path. Now note that that path is a relative path and it's assuming that the file that we're on is in the same folder as the images folder, right? Because that's a very short relative path. So if you put your exercise folder directly in your public HTML and your images folder is directly in your public HTML and your files, your image files are directly inside your images folder, that path should work, right? Um, the exception for that kind of path is when we are using a style sheet and we're using background images and that path would then be different because that path would originate from within the CSS folder. 
So it's, if it's an external style sheet, which is stored in the CSS folder, the path will look a little different. It'll be dot dot slash images slash dog because you have to get out of the CSS folder and then go into the images folder. But for now, it's a very straightforward path. So um, this assumes we have this file called dog.diff. Now, wherever I put that tag, that's where the browser will then substitute this tag for the image itself. They'll substitute the image for the tag. So um, any questions on, um, on this image tag so far? I did mention that image is uh, a fairly <coughs> tag for a number of reasons. There's no ending, of course, as you see, because it's called a replaced content tag. Um, but another reason image is a little different than most tags is it is an inline level element. It is not a block level element, right? So remember that inline level elements, you can think of as literally in a line of text. That is why they do not start a new line. They're in a line of text. And so you can think of the image as actually another word in a line of text. That may be a good way to visualize this tag, meaning it's not a block level element. It will not break and start a new line unless you tell it to by using a break <laughs> tag or sticking it in a paragraph or something like that or a list item. Um, by itself, it just stays in the line, just like an anchor tag, stays in the line of text. And you'll have text on both sides of the image if you stick it right in the middle of the sentence, which is not normally the way you want to do it. But, um, but realize that the image element is an inline level element. It is not a block level element. Okay. Now, you can put images in things like paragraphs. You can put images in list items. You can put images almost anywhere. Um, but it's an inline level element, so you can't stick other things in the image tag because the image is just replacing an image, right? So it's not really containing any, any text content or anything like that. So you, you can't put anything in an image tag other than an image. It's just there as a placeholder for an image, okay? <coughs> now, if that path is wrong, then the image won't show up and you'll get a broken image icon in your browser. Different browsers treat broken images differently, but you'll know something's wrong because you won't see the image. And quite frankly, it's almost always because of a bad path, okay? Or you forgot to upload the image <laughs> in the first place, all right? So that's something to be aware of, all right? Now, um, this is a picture of a dog that's a GIF. It could be dog.jpg if it was a photograph. Again, the file name extension is really important in an image, and your file name extensions are either going to be JPEG, GIF, or PNG. JPEG could be spelled with JPG or JPEG. It doesn't really matter as long as you're consistent with the actual name of the file so that the path matches and the browser finds the image. Okay. Um, now, the... Um, the, there are many ways to manipulate images both before you put the image online and after, okay? So the image preparation is done in image, an image uh, program, an image manipulation program, a graphics <coughs> program such as Photoshop uh, or Graphic Converter or GIMP or any number of um, pieces of software that will manipulate images. Well, once you save the image and you put it online, it can be styled and things can change about the image even after you prepare it for online work. So for example, you could create an image that's 400 pixels wide and put it online, but you can tell your style sheet to display it at 200 pixels wide or 100 pixels wide, or to skew it uh, to, to change its height and width dimensions, not even proportionally, so it looks weird. You, know, you can do all kinds of things to change the way an image presented, not just in your Photoshop or graphics program, but afterwards through your CSS styling, okay? And of course, you can put borders around images and, and, and so forth. Um, so image preparation um, is really, pardon me? It's 7 p.m. Oh, it's time for a break. Okay, <laughs> actually, this is a perfect time to take a 10 minute break. And I did tell you, you would get your 10 minute break. So let me stop recording. Where is my stop recording button? Hmm. Hmm. Now that I'm, maybe if I stop <coughs> sharing, I can stop recording. <coughs> Share. And stop recording.